Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the PetroTeach webinar on digitalization, downhole communication, and managed pressure drilling. My name is Hassan Karimai, represent PetroTeach today, and act as facilitator in this webinar. As you already heard from the organizer, you are entering as listening only mode and muted before we proceed the event. Let us check if you receive my voice properly. There is a window in front of your platform, and by clicking on the arrow, you will see the full window version with a chat box. Please type the word hi or hello so that we make sure we have established the full communication. So PetroTeach is a global provider of high quality training solutions to the oil and gas industry. Currently, we are providing about 150 training courses by up to 50 distinguished instructors with high track record from both academia and industry. Our training styles include online, public, and in-house courses. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, PetroTeach was more focused on the distance learning during last two years. However, we are happy to inform that we have resumed our face-to-face -face courses in different locations for the year 2022, while keeping virtual-led instructor facility option for our clients as well. For more information, please visit our website, www.petro-teach.com, and download the course catalog. You may also follow us in social media, such as LinkedIn, and do not forget to watch our videos on the PetroTeach YouTube channel. So the event today is part of the webinar series that PetroTeach is offering during this year, and Dr. Behzad Elahifar, expert in drilling engineering, will talk about different aspects of downhole communication, managed pressure, and digitalization. So we welcome Dr. Elahi Far, and pleased that he can join us today. He is Associate Professor at Petroleum Engineering Department of NTNU Norway, Trondheim, and has accumulated 16 years of experience in drilling engineering. The experience comes from both academia and offshore, onshore, and different regions in the world like Middle East, North Sea, Barents Sea, Caspian Sea, Australia and the Gulf of Mexico. He has working experience with NOV as a project manager with wire drill pipe and also real time communication systems in the North Sea and the Barents Sea with Equinura and also Lundi. Behzad also has the experience of working as a project manager and managed pressure drilling engineer with Enhanced Drilling Company. He has working experience with controlled mod level systems and managed pressure systems for drilling and cementing operations on the Norwegian continental shelf and in the Gulf of Mexico and also Caspian Sea. Behzad is teaching several courses and also lead research at NTNU. He has PhD, MEng, and BSc in drilling engineering. So, Let's move to the presentation. Today, Behzad will share his intimate knowledge of drilling engineering. Indeed, we will receive latest updates on the role of digitalization in drilling engineering, downhole communication, and managed pressure drilling. So let's move to the presentation. I want to remind you all that you can post your questions using the same chat box introduced at the beginning. At the Q&A session after the lecture, they will be answered. So I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Elahi Far to address his presentation. OK, very good. Yeah, hello, everyone. And uh, thank you, Mr. Kaimai, for the nice uh, introduction. As uh, you mentioned, I'm going to go through the presentation uh, with the topic of uh, digitalization, tunnel communication, and managed pressure drilling. So the content of this webinar is uh, drilling me uh, measurements, downhole communication, and telemetry and managed pressure drilling. So before starting the presentation, I'm just going to highlight uh, two goals out of uh, 17 United Nations goals, which are goal number seven and 13, uh, which is related to affordable 
and clean energy and climate action, which the output of these two goals is to reduce the CO2 footprint. And uh, I mean, with a focus in the petroleum industry, I mean, again, focusing on the drilling side and uh, drilling operation, uh, one of the key elements that we can use uh, to uh, achieve this goal, which is reducing the CO2 footprint, is uh, to reduce the uh, uh, MPT, uh, non-productive time. And that is uh, doable by digitalization and automation. So with moving people from the uh, rig side uh, to the land and trying to make the whole operation in a fully automated mode, but we need to go there step by step. So uh, drilling measurements. So I categorize the drilling measurements in two different categories, surface measurements and downhole measurements. So in the surface measurements, uh, we have different, uh, on the rig floor, we have different equipments uh, to do the operation. So uh, each of these equipments can do uh, measurements of different parameters so that based on those parameters, we can uh, make a decision uh, with respect to the bottom hole condition. And uh, these kind of equipment, I mean, uh, you might be familiar with them, like mud pumps, uh, drawworks, drop dryer, trialing block. And uh, based on the measurements that we're going to do uh, on the rig floor, uh, we're going to make a decision uh, which is going to uh, help us to do the uh, control of the downhole condition. For example, I mean, uh, one of the important area that's, uh, especially in the drilling application is that we're going to focus on is the bottom hole pressure and ECD. And we try to make sure that the bottom hole pressure is fit inside the uh, pore and frack line and the mud window. And uh, if we want to do that, we need to do the calculation and find out the bottom hole pressure, which is the hydrostatic head plus the friction pressure loss. So all these need to be calculated. I mean, with respect to some of the parameters that we're measuring on the rig floor, not from the downhole condition. So here is the sum of the list of uh, parameters that we can uh, do the measurements uh, on the rig floor, like flow rate, stamp up pressure, weight some bit, RPM, torque, return flow, uh, mud rheology, the gas percentage in the mud, mud temperature, ROP, and bit depths. So, and it's uh, an auto, I mean, it's a huge list, but I just highlighted some of them, which I think is um, important. And uh, these parameters are gonna be recorded on the surface, as I mentioned, and uh, from uh, different piece of equipment that we have them on board on the rig floor. I mean, you can see that uh, some of these parameters coming from one uh, uh, equipment and tools that we have, some of them are uh, from uh, one set, just like your flow rates and uh, stamp up pressure coming from the mud pump, weight and bit from drawers and deadline anchor, RPM and torque from the top drive, I mean, the package of return flow, mud rheology, I mean, mud temperature from mud logging unit and the mud storage unit and a mud system, ROP bit depths coming from the traveling block. And I mean, we do all these measurements uh, on the rig side to make sure that we can do the analysis uh, with respect to the downhole condition. But uh, the question here is that what will be uh, our analysis regarding the bottom hole condition? Because all these recordings coming from the surface or rig floor, and uh, we try to make a decision uh, to see what's going to happen, I mean, in 3,000, 4,000 meters uh, uh, at the bottom of the well. As an example, uh, if you want to calculate the ECD at the TVD or the uh, MD that we have, I mean, we need to calculate the pressure loss. We need to have all the information related to the uh, I mean, drill string and also borehole condition, uh, the mud rheology, friction factors, temperature. So we need to do a lot of assumptions so that we can do the calculation uh, with respect to that. And many of these parameters cannot be uh, accurately calculated. I mean, uh, uh, on the surface, because we don't have I mean, the tool which is measuring uh, the downhole condition. So for that purposes, we need downhole measurements also. I listed some of these uh, downhole measurement tools, uh, just four of them here, uh, like PWD, MWD, LWD, and ASM. So PWD is which is pressure while drilling. With that one, we can measure the uh, pressure in an annular area. I mean. Uh, right behind a bit, so it can help us to find out the 
bottom hole pressure so that when we do the bottom hole pressure calculations that is going to be uh, our key element mwd which is related to the uh, direction drilling uh, purposes azimut inclination and also when uh, some communication which i'm going to mention it later on lwd which uh, with that one which is a logging wall drilling with that one depending on the type of uh, well we drill depending on the section that we drill and depending on the formations that we're going to drill uh, we're going to use different set of uh, logging tools i mean we have a lot of I mean, resistivity log gamma ray log um, sonic log a lot of uh, uh, logging tools that we have but depending on the situation we're going to use uh, either all of them or some of them and uh, along strain measurement tools <clears throat> which they're going to measure different uh, parameters based on their uh, request uh, or based on the requirements like pressure temperature vibration and so on here is a, I prepared a, a list of some of the parameters that can be measured directly uh, with these downhole uh, measurement tools like pressure in and out. So pressure inside and outside of the string, so inside and also in the NLA area. The same with the temperature inside and outside of the, uh, inside the string and outside of the uh, string in the NLA area. Vibration in three different directions, inclination and azimuth. Changes in the weight on B, changes in the torque resistivity, borehole images, and so on. And these are related to the I mean, uh, logging well drilling tools. So depends uh, what kind of uh, logging tools that you're gonna select. But uh, the question here is that why do we need uh, downhole measurements? I mean, uh, there are four bullet points that I've prepared. So I'm gonna start up from bottom to top. So, I mean, the reason that we do these measurements uh, and downhole uh, is to increase the accuracy of the operational sequence. So we want to, for example, measure the bottom of uh, bottom hole pressure with the sensors that we have exactly behind the bit. And in case if we have the uh, an increase in the accuracy of the uh, the operational sequence, we're going to do a correct decision based on that one. And if the correct decision is made, it means that we are optimizing the operation. And uh, some of these tools, especially the MWD, is going to be using for the directional drilling purposes. I mean, it uh, it doesn't matter if you're drilling directional well, horizontal or even vertical well. So uh, keeping you on the track. I mean, uh, based on the plan that we already prepared. Uh, so with that tool, we can make sure that we are not I mean, deviating from the plan that we have. And uh, the first one that I mentioned here is the increasing the safety. Uh, increasing safety. I mean, I. Just mentioned one example here. For example, I mean, if um, we can do the correct measurements at the bottom of the uh, well, pressure-wise, then uh, imagine that we have one mud window. Uh, if it is narrow, then uh, we try to monitor that bottom hole pressure to keep uh, the bottom hole pressure or ECD inside the window. And in case if you're not inside the window, so we're going to have some problems. I mean, either we're going to gain or we're going to lose mud. That's one of the reasons that I just put this bullet point in here. So increasing the safety is one of the purposes that we are doing the uh, downhole measurements. So downhole communication and telemetry. So sending commands uh, to the downhole or receiving the information, the measurements from uh, bottom of the well to the surface, I mean, what we call it, the uh, downhole communication. And there are different methods. I listed four of them here, which is mod pulse telemetry, acoustic telemetry, electromagnetic telemetry in wide drill pipe. So let's just start with the mud pulse uh, telemetry. So mud pulse telemetry is a common method uh, that is going to be used uh, even nowadays to send and uh, transfer the data with mud pulse uh, uh, pressure pulses uh, with MWD and other tools. So in the downhole uh, system, there is a valve to operate and restrict this flow to create these pressure pulses. And these pressure pulses are uh, containing data, which is coming to the surface or rig floor and by transducers, they're gonna extract those data out of those pulses. And uh, the mod pulsing system is uh, bi-directional. So it means that it is uh, it can be done in two ways. So we can send and receive information uh, in two directions. And this uh, technology mod pulse telemetry system uh, have three uh, different varieties, uh, three different methods where we can do this. Positive pulse, negative pulse, and continuous wave. Uh, and a positive pulse, when 
the tool uh, briefly open and close the valve to restrict the mud flow inside the pipe uh, to create these uh, pressure pulses. And if you want to just uh, uh, simulate it in your head, just imagine that uh, you have a drill pipe which inside is plugged. And if that happened, uh, the stamp up pressure gauges start to increase. So that's a, the same ideology that used to just uh, create these uh, pressure pulses. And normally, uh, when they want to uh, send uh, information from bottom of the well to the surface or to the rig floor, uh, first of all, the reference pulses are going to be sent, and then uh, these reference pulses are going to be followed by the pressure pulses with the data is going to be, I mean, uh, uh, encrypted. And then the uh, transducers at the surface are going to receive these pulses and they're going to extract the data out of it. And then in case if you want to send the command to the tool again, the same methodology is going to be used. Next one is the negative pulses. Here, uh, the tool is open and close the valve to release the mud from inside the string to the NLA area. So just like, again, uh, if you want to simulate that, but just like having your washout. So if there is a hole on the I mean, drill string, you're going to see a pressure drop in the stamp up pressure gate. So by this methodology, they're going to create some in, uh, negative pulses. And then the same with the positive pulse, you're going to send and receive the data from surface uh, to downhole and from downhole to the surface. Last one, but not least, is the continuous wave with this system. And again, you're going to create the pressure pulses, but uh, here you gradually open and close the valve to generate the sinusoidal uh, pressure fluctuations or pressure pulses. And again, the same uh, system as the other two. Uh, first, uh, the reference pulses are going to be sent, which is followed by the uh, data pulses, which the pressure pulses which carrying the data. And then those data is going to be extracted uh, from the tool. So, uh, but the important part, um, the current remote pulse telemetry I mean, technology can uh, just uh, offer the bandwidth of 200 bit per second. So it means that the amount of data that you can I mean, transfer from bottom to surface or vice versa is 20 bit per second. And it is depend on uh, two things. One is the mud, uh, the hydraulic system, mud type. And uh, the other one is the depth. So it means that if you drill deeper, the amount of information that you can transmit is going to be less and less. Just like an example here, 10,000 meters, uh, the amount of information that you can transfer is up to 0.5 bit per second uh, and a maximum 3 bit per second. So it dropped down dramatically I mean, at the deeper sections. And also, as I mentioned, it is uh, totally depends on the uh, mud and mud type. I'm going to mention it I'm in later on. One. Um, the other method is the acoustic telemetry. So uh, this uh, acoustic telemetry uses the steel wall of the drill string and the drill pipe assembly to, I mean, as a main uh, communication channel so that they can transfer and transmit the sound waves uh, to the surface at the frequency of uh, between 400 uh, up to 2000 hertz. And as these uh, sound waves are going to be attenuated, so we need some repeaters in between. So these repeaters are going to be used to retransmit the signal, to contract the signal attenuation. And these uh, repeaters are going to be I mean, installed along the string with the distance between five to 2,000 meters. And uh, you can I mean, install the different uh, sensor along the string so that in case if you want to record uh, some parameters that you're looking for and then transmit them to the surface uh, about a system. This uh, telemetry system is also bidirectional and the transmission rate is up to 20 bit per second, just like the Modpulse telemetry. Next one is uh, electromagnetic telemetry. Which electromagnetic waves are going to be sent to Earth uh, or going through the different formations uh, from the uh, transmitter to the receiver? And uh, there are some positive points with uh, this method and negative points. Uh, the positive points is that the same as the other two, it's bi directional. You can send and receive information. Uh, it doesn't uh, depend on the hydraulic system, uh, which I'm going to mention now. 
uh, and no rotating part. So it means it's durable. And the negative part is that it's limited to onshore wells because you need to install the receiver on the surface. I mean, uh, offshore it's not possible. And uh, signal would attenuate with respect to depth. And also it is depend on the formation uh, liquid, if it is resistant or not. So I mentioned it is depend, uh, it, it is not depending on the hydraulic system. Uh, so if you remember I mentioned with the mud pulse telemetry, it is purely dependent on the mud uh, and mud type. In, in case of drilling a section under balance using air or foam uh, as a I mean, drilling fluid, then the mud pulse telemetry is useless and you cannot use that to send uh, information I mean, bidirectionally. So in those cases, uh, uh, electromagnetic telemetry is going to be used, I mean, because it doesn't depend on the hydraulic system and the drilling mud. And the transmission rate uh, is up to between 6 to 10 bit per second, or less than the other two, uh, depending on the uh, carrier frequency. Last one, but not least, is the wired drill pipe telemetry. So, I mean, uh, there are different companies offering this uh, because uh, these uh, three different companies that I mentioned are um, uh, providing different uh, uh, properties of the uh, uh, water drill pipe. That's why I'm highlighting them here. So three different companies, uh, it's IntelliServe water drill pipe. It belongs to NOV and I think it's Schlumberger also. And Dual Link, which is uh, belong to Real Will, and power line drill string, which is uh, owned by the TD Group. So before starting uh, talking about each one, I, so the general information on the one drill pipe is that it is possible to do by directional communication. So you can send and receive information with the wire pipe. And uh, wire pipe and tubeless, so all the pipes are going to be wired. So I mean, drill pipes, I mean, uh, drill colors, BHA need to be wired. And the uh, service data acquisition is top drive suitable. And we have a long string measurement tools and elements uh, along the string. So you can set up as many sensors as you want. So it can collect uh, the information depending on what you need. So let's start with the uh, IntelliServe wire drill pipe, which belongs to NOV and Schumburg. So with this system, it is possible to um, do the data transmission up to 57,600 bit per second, and now that it's even more. But uh, just let's focus on this number and compare it to the other three methods that I mentioned. The other three methods uh, is up to maximum 20 bit per second. So if you compare this one with the other three, you can transfer tons of data I mean, from downhole to surface and vice versa also. But uh, the question here is, I mean, are we able to use all these data which is coming up in real time? And, or we need to use a small portion and using the rest and the post drilling analysis. So the main components here with this system is wire drill pipe. I mean, uh, uh, drill pipes, colors, and OBHA. Data links, which they're, uh, just like the repeaters, I mean, uh, which I mentioned in the acoustic system, they're amplifying and boosting the signal. And ASMs, which along with measurement devices, plus the uh, data acquisition point, which is top drive suitable. So the data transferring uh, method in this uh, system is what we call it induction. So uh, in this uh, system, the drill pipe is going to be gun drilled. A data cable is going to be installed I mean, in, inside, and it is going to be connected to the inductive connector. And when two pipes are going to be connected uh, from pin and box, these uh, inductive connectors are going to be in front of each other, and the data is going to be transferred by induction. Uh, one thing uh, I need to mention here is that, uh, as I told you, we have a longer stream measurement tools and other measurement tools also, plus the data links or those repeaters, boosters. All these tools uh, need to have a source of power, and this source of power is coming from batteries. So it means that all these equipment with this system require batteries. So it means when you want to plan to drilling one section, 
uh, let's say, I mean, if the section, I mean, uh, need to be drilled in with the time duration of 25, 30 hours, you need to plan for the uh, battery life of these equipments at the same time. Uh, so in case if you plan to drill 30 hours, you need to make sure that all the tools that you're installing here have the battery life of 30 hours. Otherwise, if one of those repeaters or data links in between, uh, for example, has a battery life of 10 hours, and after 10 hours, the battery life is done, and it means that from that point and below, there is no communication. Uh, the only communication is going to happen from that point in the ball. And uh, in case if the other tools have still the battery life and going, they're going to measure and do the measurements, but there is no communication. So this needs to be highlighted and need to be planned ahead. Next uh, is the uh, dual link from real world. So this uh, white pipe uh, is uh, transferring data up to 56,000 bit per second and is bi-directional. And the transmission is gonna be done by conductive copper braid, as you can see a picture here from uh, uh, the company's website. And it can transfer 500 watt of power. And you can use it on the stream measurements. I'm gonna come back to this uh, power transmission after the next slide. So next one is a power line uh, drill string, which is belong to today group. Mm. It can also transfer 500,000 bit per second, even more. And with a power transmission of 300 watts, and, it, and also the same with the others. So uh, a long stream measurements can be used. But the difference between the last two, uh, with the first one is that these two can do power transmission. So that is the one positive points because if you can transfer, uh, transmit power, so it means that you don't need to use batteries. So all those batteries that I mentioned I mean, in the IntelliServe one could be removed. And if you remove all those batteries, it means that a lot of weight can be removed. And also you have a lot of I mean, space. So now you can redesign your tool uh, with the new space that you have. Plus, if you have, uh, I mean, be able to do the power transmission, uh, you know that I mean, electronics can handle the temperature up to 110, 120. So from that point, I mean, electronics cannot work. However, if you can be able to do the power transition, so it means that you can create a cooling uh, system downhole to just make sure that the electronics uh, does not I mean, handle that high temperature. So it means that you can be able to drill in a high temperature zone area also. That is a um, positive point. Uh, 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 with these two. But uh, out of these three, the first one, IntelliServe, is in operation for a long time. It, these last two products uh, are, gonna be, are already tested, I mean, in a well, but I've never heard of that they're used in the real operation. I mean, maybe they are, but uh, at least in comparison to the IntelliServe, they're much uh, younger. Uh, the IntelliServe version uh, or the NOE version has uh, been used for a long time. Good. So here I just uh, closed the, the part which is related to the uh, downhole uh, telemetry and communication. And I'm going to start talking about the managed pressure drilling. And I'm at the end of the managed pressure drilling part, I'm going to come back and connect it to the wire drill pipe system and uh, try to show you how we can combine two technologies and use in the operation. So managed pressure drilling. Uh, drilling with Precisely controlled bottom hole pressure to avoid any influx, losses, or wall hole instability. And the pressure profile is going to be uh, managed by adding surface pressure or by changing in the hydrostatics or friction pressure. So the goal here is to minimize uh, pressure related drilling problems. So if we have a typical uh, mud window, just like this one, hole pressure, frac pressure. In this area that you can see, I mean, uh, it's a, I mean, a wide window. So I mean, we don't have any problem uh, drilling through here with different mud weights if we can fit it in between. But if we drill deeper in the areas like this, when the um, pore and frac line are close to each other, it's a narrow, almost 0.5 ppg. So this, uh, in this area, when drilling through this area is going to be difficult. Conventionally, so in, in case if we drill through it, either we might be losing mud or we might be having a uh, kick. 
So for that purpose, we need to use the technology to make sure that we are fit inside the window and not going out. So it means that we need to go back into basics again. Uh, so typically, this is the pressure uh, versus depth. Uh, we have four pressure lines, track pressure line, and oh, the yellow area in between is what we call a drilling window. So we want to make sure that the bottom hole pressure is fit inside this window while drilling. Because if we go outside, we're going to have problems, either kick or we're going to lose. However, uh, the thing that needs to be monitored is that while drilling, oh, we have a bottom hole uh, pressure, which is hydrostatic plus the friction pressure loss, which is ECD. And when we drill, we need to make sure that the bottom hole pressure is inside the window. Uh, but at the same time, when we want to do a connection, then we don't have ECD. So the pressure is going to be dropping down. The only thing that we have is hydrostatic. Head. So we need to make sure that during drilling and during connection, the bottom hole pressure is still inside the window. But not always is the case. So, I mean, sometimes if the uh, mud window is narrow, you might be starting drilling and uh, in the dynamic side, which you're uh, pumping mud, you're in the window. When you do the connection, you're still in the window. But if you keep continue drilling, uh, either, I mean, during connection, you might be outside of the window or even during drilling, you might be outside of the window. So if you want to clarify this one, I mean, is that this, um, Orange dashed line is a frac pressure, and blue one is a pull pressure. So for this case, I mean, uh, during connection, the bottom hole pressure is fit inside the window. No problem. You turn on the pumps, you won't start drilling, you're losing mud. Or maybe vice versa. While you're drilling, you're in the window, mud windows. So there is no problem. But as long as you reach to the point that you need to do connection, you need to turn off the pump. And if you turn off the pump, you're outside of the window and you might be receiving kicks. So then uh, we need to use a technology here, or we need to use, go back to the, uh, again, basic calculations. How we calculate the bottom hole pressure. So it's really easy. So I just made it in uh, field unit data. So bottom hole pressure in PSI, um, 0 0.052 multiplied by mud weight in pound per gallon and the TVD, uh, which is in foot. So if you want to change the bottom hole pressure, one of the things that we can change is the mud weight. Yes, doable. I mean, you drill, you're in the window, you want to do a connection, then you need to change, I mean, or replace the mud with the load and, I mean, uh, with the new mud, with the new mud weight, so that you don't uh, have any problem. But it is not logical that we do this, I mean, because we don't want to spend uh, time and money on that. Next one is changing the hydrostatic head of what? Sometimes it is doable, difficult, sometimes it's not doable. And, but with this one also, we can affect the bottom of pressure. And the other one is the back pressure. So we can add the back pressure and manipulate or just play with that back pressure to just make sure that we're uh, affecting the bottom of pressure. What I'm trying to focus on uh, today uh, out of these three parameters, I'm gonna focus on the hydrostatic head of mud. I mean, uh, with this presentation. So this is a typical well board that we have and a rig, a riser, and I mean, drilling. Uh, with a control mod level system, you need to install a pump uh, on the riser or connect the pump I mean, to the riser. And this is need to be connected to the uh, riser with a hose and the pressure sensors are gonna be installed at this port. And this pump, uh, which is some sort of a uh, centrifugal pump in that uh, category, is connected to the return line, and the return line is going to back to the shakers. So this means that when this pump is not working, uh, it will suck the mud out of the riser through the pump and push it back to the shakers. And with that method, uh, you can play with the mud level in the riser. So the mud level in the riser is going to fluctuate based on the power that you can have. Uh, with them uh, with this uh, pump and uh, if we do that as we know I mean uh, the uh, hydrostatic head or the TVD has a direct uh, uh, relationship with the bottom hole pressure so if we increase this one if we increase the mud level in the riser the bottom hole pressure is going to increase and if we reduce this one the bottom hole pressure is going to reduce that has a direct effect so we, this means that we can manipulate the bottom hole pressure and by that one, we can do the ECD compensation. So ECD could be compensated by uh, manipulating that one. 
So there are some benefits included with this system. Uh, we can drill deeper and longer because uh, as we drill deeper, so it means that the length uh, is going to be added to the well bore, friction added, hydrostatic head added. So bottom hole pressure is going to increase as we drill deeper. But uh, and the bottom hole pressure try to just increase, go towards the frac pressure line. If we lower down the mud level, then the bottom hole pressure is going to back into the middle part, and we can keep continue drilling deeper. So that's one of the points. Reducing or eliminating uh, the fluid loss. I mean, the reason that we have a fluid loss because the bottom hole pressure is more than or above the frac pressure line. So in that case, if we lower down the mud level, so we're going to reduce the bottom hole pressure and put the bottom hole pressure back into the window. So in the best case, eliminating it or at least reducing that. Better hole cleaning by increasing the uh, increasing the flow rate. So one of the parameters that can help us, I mean, not the only, but one of them, is increasing the flow rate to just get rid of the cuttings. But uh, there are some conditions that you cannot do that. For example, in the I mean, uh, smaller hole sections, I mean, if you increase the flow rate, you're going to increase the friction pressure loss and the ECD, and then your bottom hole pressure is going to go above the frac pressure point, frac pressure line. However, that could be done, and the mud level could be reduced to compensate for that, and you can increase the flow rate. Reducing the number of casing points, yeah, as we said that we can drill deeper. So when we can drill deeper, so we can set our casing points at a deeper section, and which is ending up re reducing number of casing also. Detecting kick and influxes so earlier. So let's say if we have a kick at the bottom of the well, the effect will come past through the well and rise, and then it will show on the rig floor and the mud tanks. And then we can detect it if there is a kicker loss. So this effect is going to pass through this system first and then reaches to the rig floor system. So that's the reason that we can detect any changes or any, uh, I mean, influx or kick with this system earlier because we're going to check, uh, because as I mentioned, there is a pressure sensor installed here. So we can clearly monitor the mud level uh, in the riser. And then there is no need uh, to change the mud density before tripping out. I mean, in some cases, because you can manipulate the mud level here. Uh, reducing the surge pressure while tripping in. So while tripping in, I mean, uh, we can reduce the mud level so that we can uh, reduce the surge pressure picks. I mean, that is one of the options. And using riser as an active tank. So from this point, which we have a connection uh, between the pump to the riser and above we are doing a volume control so this means that uh, by this from here and above uh, we are having some sort of using the riser as an active tank and another tank on top of the old tanking system that we have and we can do dynamic flow check also so this means that if in case there is a kicker loss so what we should do normally we just uh, shut down the pumps and do the flow check but here, you can keep continue uh, flow and do the flow. And at the same time, you monitor the mud level. So you keep the mud level fixed and monitor that when to do the dynamic flow check. And one more thing need to be highlighted here. This system can only be used in offshore. And you cannot use this one onshore. So for onshore, uh, if you want to use uh, MPD system, you need to use a back pressure MPD. But back pressure MPD could be used both onshore and offshore, but this system can be only used in offshore. So uh, uh, I just want to just uh, clarify this in the pressure lines. So RKB, so imagine that this is the rig floor, this is the seabed, uh, this is the well bore, pore pressure line, frac pressure line. If you want to drill with the seawater, so as you can see, the seawater can be used in the just in top hole section, and up to this point. This well could be I mean, drilled. I, I'm just I mean, just talking about pressure-wise, so I'm uh, not considering other parameters. So pressure-wise, it can be drilled up to this point, up to this step. So if you use a conventional mud, depending on mud density, so different mud density is giving us uh, different slopes. But as an example, this one, that we can start drilling from this step to this step. So that is the limitation of using this uh, type of mud that we can. If you use a back pressure MPD, if you use the seawater plus the back pressure, so we're going to push this uh, line to this side, and we can drill from this point or at this depth up to here. And in case if we want to use the I mean, uh, 
Timel system. We're going to lower down the mud level in the riser, and we're going to drill through the uh, well bore. And as you can see, uh, the slope of uh, uh, pressure line in the Timel system is almost following the, the same pattern of the forearm flat line. So that's why, I mean, we can drill deeper sections with the Seamel system. I mean, with the casing points, conventionally, I mean, you need to find out the casing points by using this step method between the pore and flat line, and then you drill each section with the con conventional drilling fluid that you have. However, using the Seamel system, you can drill deeper sections. So it means that these sections or the casing points are going to be reduced. I mean, uh, and then, I mean, for sure, different mud densities by lowering the mud level, then you can cover that section with that density. And here, <clears throat> uh, the goal here is that to reducing the number of casing points that we can use in the well board, which is ending up uh, reducing the total cost of the operation. Another uh, small benefit is that when you use the system, uh, there is an empty, empty part in the riser, but the string is full of mud. And when you want to do a connection, so what's going to happen is that uh, there's a YouTube effect that's happening. And for that purpose, you have all your connection, what we call a dry connection on the rig flow, and there is no mother splits on the rig flow. I took this from one of the publications that I put the reference here, I'm going to show you at the end. So uh, based on the graph out of this publication, it shows that while using the system, the riser pressure, the pressure exactly at the point uh, that the, uh, it is connected, the pump to the riser is going to be recording pressure from that point and above to monitor the mud level in the riser. So this shows that the riser pressure is fixed. It means that they keep the mud level constant in the riser and suddenly it starts increasing. So this means that something, I mean, entered the well bore, an extra volume, and there's a sign of a kick. And 48 seconds later, and on top, if you see, uh, the red line is the flow in and uh, the orange one is the flow out. So normally they should be, I mean, overlapping each other. But from that point, the flow out is greater than the flow in. So this means that there is a deviation and there is something entering to the well board. But it, it detected almost a minute later. So that shows that, as I mentioned, the um, effect of any changes in the bottom hole condition can be monitored with the system earlier than the rig uh, equipment system. This is also coming from that publication. So uh, the, uh, as you can see here, this well is drilled conventionally. Mud weight is 11 and a half uh, ppg. Uh, it was drilled um, up to 7,200 feet horizontal section until the bottom hole pressure reaches to 6,400. So at that point, it reaches almost to the limit, close to the frack line. The same well uh, drilled with the cable system, lowering the mud level, but with the mud density greater than that one. So 11 and a half, this one is 12. But this one the drilled uh, almost 9,200 feet in the horizontal section until it reached to the I mean, frack pressure so that they stop. So the difference between these two is 2,000 feet, almost 660 meters. I mean, that is going to be adding value to the production I mean, uh, zone because if you're drilling in the production zone, so 600 meters extra is going to be helping you in the production side. And uh, it was uh, also mentioned that Using these uh, technology in four, I mean, in two of the wells from the four wells out of one platform, two of them drilled conventionally with the horizontal lengths of 2,800 meters. The other to use the system, and then the horizontal section becomes 4,000 meters and 3,300. So it means that using the system can help to drill longer. The reason is while you're drilling a horizontal section, the hydrostatic is not changing. The only thing which is changing is the, I mean, uh, the lengths. And as, as you drill further, adding lengths, it means that you're adding friction. So by adding friction means that the ECD increases, bottom hole pressure increases, and it will reach to the limiting point, which is the frac pressure line. But if you lower down the mud level to compensate for that extra pressure which is added, then it means that now it's, you have the area in the uh, mud window to drill further. And that's uh, what happened here. 
Next is comparing uh, the casing point uh, that I mentioned at the beginning. So this is a typical well that uh, was drilled and the casing points uh, planned like this, 36, 20, 13, 38, 5 over 8, and 7. But using the CML system uh, to, uh, first of all, drop down one casing point because they extend the length of uh, each uh, casing further because you can drill deeper with each one and uh, setting the casing points deeper and deeper uh, until the point that you set the 9 5 or 8 inch casing at the TD. So you get two benefits out of it. So first you re remove one casing points. It means that you save the, the, the cost related to the casing. You save the time related to the casing running. You save the cost related to the cementing material. And also you save the time related to the cementing operation. This is one side. Second, you reach to the uh, TD or the reservoir with the larger size. I mean, if you compare it to the uh, conventional version. So it means that you also add another benefit related to the production also. Good, so we are almost uh, close to the end part, uh, which I'm gonna bring up uh, the connection between MPD and also uh, the communication, uh, downhole communication system. So this system can work in two different uh, uh, ways. One is fixed mud level, the other one is floating uh, mud level. Fixed mud level, you keep the mud level fixed, let's say 200 meters, and you keep drilling and doing connection with that fixed mud level, so it means that the, during connection, during drilling, you don't change the mud level. So it means that there is a change in variation in the bottom hole pressure during drilling and connection. But there is another option of floating mud level. So it means that while drilling, you keep the mud level fixed at some uh, depth like 200 meters. And when you want to do a connection, you bring the mud level up from 200 to 100 meters to compensate for the ECV. So this means that during drilling and during connection, you try to keep the bottom hole pressure fixed. And for that purposes, you need to do some inputs. Uh, so, I mean, as an example here, you have a flow rate of 2000 liters a minute. The mud level is 66 meters. But when you want to do a connection, so it means that you need to turn off the pump. So you want to keep the mud level at uh, 33. So by raising up, you can compensate for that ECD that it happened. But you need to do the calculation. So it means that you need to uh, calculate the friction pressure loss to make sure that when you turn off the pump, what is the amount of ECD so that you can, uh, by that calculation, you can define a new uh, mud level in the riser. However, with this system, you compensate for the connection. But uh, again, while you drill, uh, while you do the drilling action, you keep the mud level constant, fixed. So it means that as you drill deeper and deeper, uh, you add length, you add friction, and in case if you drill vertically, you add uh, hydrostatic also. So it means that the bottom hole pressure is going to increase anyway. So time to time, you need to reduce the mud level again. So this is not what we call the fully um, automated system, so you can uh, uh, fluctuate the mud level in the riser. So for that purpose, as I mentioned, if you use a wire drill pipe, if you have, uh, I mean, sensors uh, setting along the string, like PWD along the same measurements, it doesn't matter, I mean, how many, but like you have one PWD behind a bit, measuring the pressure in the analyte area, and you have a three or four along the same measurement system, let's say three. So you have another tree with a different, with distance of, of, I don't know, 100 meters, 200 meters, 500 meters. So it means that you have some pressure points um, along your string that you can measure directly. So the plan here is you want to make a fully automated system. Uh, so you have a starting uh, point of a section to drill and you have a TD. And the reason that you're using the system because the mud window is narrow. So what you're going to do, you want to keep your bottom hole pressure inside the window. And normally as it is narrow, you want to keep it exactly in the middle. So we need uh, to make sure that the uh, mud level in the riser uh, fluctuate in a way so that to keep the bottom of pressure uh, on the planned uh, uh, bottom hole pressure that we're going to input to the system. So we have the uh, recorded data, measurement data points. So we need to define a hydraulic model 
So we need to define a hydraulic model to calculate the pressure losses here because we need to connect this pressure model to the mud level in the riser. So that pressure model need to be accurate. So, but uh, for that purpose, we need the hydraulic model. And now we have some uh, real-time measurements, uh, let's say PWD and another three uh, long term measurement pressure point. So let's say four pressure measurements in the annular area and four pressure measurements inside the string. So all together is gonna to be eight pressure points. So you have eight pressure points recorded. You have your hydraulic model. You can train your model with those data using machine learning and AI, and then make sure that, I mean, uh, the uh, because I cannot open it up uh, right now, so in more detail, but you need to uh, check your hydraulic model to make sure that in case, for example, you calculate uh, the um, at a depth of PWD, you have uh, your pressure measurements. So with the hydraulic model that you define, you need to uh, calculate the same pressure measurements that the PWD is measuring. If they're the same, so your model is working perfect. If not, you need to iterate and tune it. So if it is measuring or calculating the same measurement points, it means it is accurate. Then you can back calculate and uh, measure the uh, mod level in the riser. And you need to define some boundary conditions. So making the bottom hole pressure exactly in the middle part at the beginning and need to make sure that your model follow that one from the starting of the section to the TD. And by that, the uh, system is going to work fully automated to make sure that the bottom of pressure is always in the middle, even during drilling and during connection and while the operation is ongoing. And not even you can do this here with the system, you can do it with the back pressure and PD also. So, I mean, but here you don't need to, I mean, here is, is the goal not to work with the mud level, here is to work with the back pressure system. So you can make the same uh, uh, algorithm to, to uh, connect it, this system uh, with warp up uh, technology so that you can have uh, the stream of data coming from uh, downhole with the downhole measurement tools so that to make the uh, back pressure system fully automated to keep the bottom of pressure constant all the time. Yes, thank you very much. And here is the uh, reference of all the, I mean, some of these uh, graphs and uh, pictures that I showed you. And uh, one more slide is that uh, in October this year, there's gonna be a course that I'm presenting uh, covering the MPD system and CML system, dual grade in, uh, drilling system, and managed pressure cementing system. I'm covering the, the tools, the operation, and also the design, and also the link between these technologies and also the downhole communication with the data and also with some examples. Thank you very much.